Did we make the right choice in sticking with this team rather than blowing it up at the trade deadline? Well, today we are going to find out. Now, the easy thing to do would have been to blow this team up, get whatever we could for the likes of Artem Anisimov, Connor Brown, Ilya Mikheyev, potentially Taylor Hall as well, certainly Vladislav Nemesnikov, potentially Mark Borowiecki, as well, although there is, of course, as I mentioned in the uh, comment, uh, comment section of the episode uh, last... How to phrase this? I'm leaving this in. Two episodes ago in the comment section, I mentioned it in the last episode, uh, there was some talk as to whether or not Borowiecki should uh, be, you know, stay if I can keep him, if I'm allowed to keep him, unless he decides he wants to leave. Whether or not we made the right choice in keeping this team together, I don't know. But I will say I'm more interested in what can happen in this episode now than I would have been in having a couple of picks and some extra prospects to work with immediately. You know, Anisimov, Brown, Mikheyev, you know, could we have gotten some decent medium top six prospects and some draft picks? Probably. I don't know if we would have gotten any top notch, like high top four uh, defensemen or high top six forwards. So really, in terms of how much we're missing out on, I don't, th I don't think we're missing out on that much by keeping these guys and saying, hey, let's just go for it. I do wonder, you know, say the crazy thing happens and we win the damn cup this season. How does that affect the interest in this series moving forward? I don't know, because obviously we're still going to have to suffer the effects of dealing with Melnick as our owner. You know, this season alone, of course, you know, we lost a coach, which sucks. We are going to continue to lose staff members and players on a whim, and it's going to suck. And of course, there are going to be players that we're not going to be able to pay in the future as well. But for now, if we got a shot to go for it, if we can make the playoffs, why not is the the mantra that we're going to go with at this point in time. So with that said, you know the team, you know the situation. In terms of goaltending, Linus Allmark is going to get an opportunity, but it is a... It is a more than a platoon at this point. I mean, it is a, a small army in terms of goaltenders that we could deploy in this postseason. But this is what we are dealing with. Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, and David Posternock still on the top line. Nick Ritchie, Charlie Coyle, and Andre Kasha. Jake DeBrusque, David Krejci, and Anders Bjork. There has to be some morale at, at, uh, at play here for Krejci. And Bergeron, I would suspect. Fourth line of Charlie Udon, uh, Sean Corrali, and Chris Wagner. So obviously, it's still very similar you know, to what the Bruins have now, with the exception of Udon in, rather than, say, Par Lindholm or Joachim Nordstrom. And it's still going to be a problem to deal with. Defensively, it is Tori Krug and Charlie McAvoy, Matt Grizzly, Brennan Carlo, John Moore, and Connor Clifton. So again, pretty similar to what you'd see in real life, of course, with the exception of Zdeno Chara. The goaltender, Tuka Rask. He is with Yaroslav Halak. The healthy scratch is Parlandholm and Lozon. Zemgis Gergensens is actually on this team, too. No, thank you. He is currently injured, so I suppose he would be in rather than the former Hab in Charles Dol. So, it's a solid team, as you would suspect. It's a good team. They won 48 games. They managed to jump us, of course, as did Tampa in the regular season standings. And when you take a look at the overall differentials, yeah, we're up against it. As Marchand is their top player. Brady Kachuk is ours, of course. Is ours, of course. We're up against it here. But you know what? Who's to say? Who's to say? Crazier things have happened. Maybe, just maybe, we can pull off this upset. Time will tell. Let's get down to business. It is game one of our first round matchup against the Boston Bruins here in Boston. First period does not go well at all. Oh, baby. Power play goal for Patrice Bergeron. Anders Bjork and Andre Kasha both score as well. They outshot us 15-7. to I don't know how the hell Bergeron scored from there. 15-7. to And we are down 3 to nothing. Ugh. Second period. It gets worse. Anders Bjork gets his second goal of the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, power play chance here early on in the third. That goes to waste. Maybe, just maybe, we should have gone with the obvious 
option of just selling. I'm I'm happy that we made the playoffs, but oh god, McAvoy scores the fifth goal of the game. Of course, they don't score late on the power play. Tukarask with a 27 save shutout for the Bruins in a five to nothing victory for the black and gold. That was as bad as that situation could have possibly gone for us. Let's be honest. Linus Hallmark, I hate to tell you, I know the team didn't get any offense for you, but uh, you're going to take a seat for Anders Nilsson. <laughs> that is absolutely going to happen. Now, what I want to check here is penalty minutes. Six penalty minutes for Logan Brown in that game. Horrific. We have an enforcer who didn't even take penalties. Logan Brown, stay out of the box, please. Well, let's get right down to business. It's game two. Intrigued to see how this one's going to play out. <laughs> it can't go much worse than game one happened to go. First period, 2 to nothing. Boston lead. Anders Bjork and David Krejci. We outshot them. They outscored us. Yikes. Second period. Okay, hey, we found our offensive touch. Colin White, Bobby Ryan, two goals in 59 seconds. And a little bit later on, Bobby Ryan actually gave us the lead on a power play goal. Anders Bjork scores again. He has a goddamn cheat code right now. But three unanswered goals. Now all of a sudden we're tied at three. Heading into the third period, shots are very close as well. So not a bad situation to be in. Perhaps an opportunity to steal this game away from Boston and have a 1-1 split before we head back to Ottawa, or it should be Canada, don't call it Ottawa, Canada. As Colin White scores again, Tuka Rask was pulled in the second period, so Yaroslav Halak is in, and we have a pretty good chance here. Three, two, one, please. Good lord, the Ottawa Senators, how do you like that? It wasn't looking too good after game one, but we take game two by the score of four to three. Anders Bjork with a three-point night in the loss as Colin White and Bobby Ryan lead us to victory. Two goals apiece. Taylor Hall yet to score in this series, but has three assists. And that is a tale of two games. A 5-0 loss and a 4-3 win. As the Belleville Sens disappointingly did not make the playoffs. That is a much, much worse record than I would have thought that they would have had. I gotta be honest. I mean... You look at guys like Formanton, Balser, Schlapik, uh, Batherson, Abramoff. They were not as good as they should have been. Josh Norris as well. So there's some cause for concern. Christian Milanen had a pretty good season. But some cause for concern amongst that AHL team. As Marcus Hogberg did not have a good season. Decord was fine. <coughs> Gustafson got to play a little bit. But all in all, very disappointing season for the AHL team. But that does mean now that we get to focus solely on the task at hand here at the NHL level. And I think quite obviously, I mean, he wasn't great, but I think we give the opportunity. Oof, Ilya Mikheyev's roughed up. He's not going to be able to play in this game. I can't risk him getting hurt long term. When you look at these two games so far, honestly, I think I'm going to give Aiden Hill the opportunity here in game three. Give each of them an opportunity, and if Aiden Hill has a strong performance and gets the W, he starts in game four. But the big thing to note here, Ilya Mikheyev will be sitting out game three as we're not going to use Michael Carcone or Carcone, call him what you will. Uh, we will call somebody up here now that the AHL season has come to a close so that they can play on that line. And I mean, Formanton led the AHL team in points. There's Howerluck, Balser, Schlapik, Batherson. You know what? Let's let's reward Alex Formanton for being the AHL's leading scorer on our team at least this season. We might as well reward him and give him an opportunity on that third line alongside Logan and Connor Brown. Obviously, you know he's not a two-way, but we should be all right. So, a couple of changes. You have Alex Formanton in the lineup and Aiden Hill is going to be given the opportunity here in Game 3 as we are on home ice. See what we can do. Can we take advantage of it? First period, goal apiece. Brady Kachuk scores, as does Nick Ritchie. Horrible angle for the Kachuk goal. 
I'll take it though. Tied at one. Second period, still tied at one. 28 shots to 23 in our favor, yet we have a tie score. Heading into the third period, this is anybody's game. At this point in time, David Posternock scores on the power play. Not ideal. Power play again for the Bruins. Goes to waste. Another power play for the Bruins, and McAvoy scores in the aftermath. Penalty trouble again costing us here in this game. The Bruins will take game three by the score of 3-1. to one. Connor Brown and Alexi Lafreniere, but in particular Connor Brown, had a nightmare third period. As a result, the Bruins walk away with the win. Tuka Rask, an incredibly strong performance, stopping 37 of 38 en route to the victory. So, not what we would have preferred to have seen there, as there really has been no consistency amongst this lineup so far. Taylor Hall still without a goal, as rough as that is. So looking here, I mean, Aiden Hill and Anders Nilsson, Hill's going to get another chance. He didn't get the win, but he does have the most impressive save percentage to this point. Uh, the liabushkin borovietsky pairing has been absolute garbage so far. Thomas Shabbat's honestly struggled a little bit too. So I think what I want to do here, let's, I mean, Lyabushkin and Borovietsky have been awful. We might, be, uh, we might be in store for more changes here. It's tough to say. I think Linus Allmark has lost his spot. We're not going to send him down, though. Josh Brown will be sent down. And with Leah Bushkin being as poor as he's been, I mean, just awful. Not that borvietsky has been much better, but we're going to hold on to Borvietsky. I think Ilya is probably going to be scratched. And I'm going to give Max Lajoie the opportunity. Actually, mm, you know what? I'm going to give Christian Milan the opportunity. He was our top defenseman in the AHL this past season. We are going to give Christian Milan the opportunity as Ilya Mikheyev will slot, will slot back in for one Alex Formanton. So, Ilya, 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 welcome back to the team. And then defensively, Yabushkin will be taken out for one Christian Milanen. And, hmm. Side 7 Graves haven't been that bad. I do want to break up Brandstrom and Shabbat. Shabbat hasn't been amazing. The problem is he's better suited for the third pairing over any other pairing that we have. But playing Shabbat in the third pairing sounds like a damn death sentence. What if... Borowiecki's best fit is in the top six. Or the top six, the top four. So say, hold on, let's, let's take a look here. God, Shabbat is such a horrible fit for, for this current head coach. Zaitsev can only really do well on the third line as well. Milanin's an amazing fit for that third pairing. Interesting. So we can get a plus one out of that if we go with Milanin and Shabbat. Which works for me. If we were to go OFD, DFD, we might get a plus three out of it, but I'm not too concerned. Zaitsev, although as well, is only a good fit for that third pairing. I think we're going to go Zaitsev, Shabbat. As crazy as that is, on the third pairing. It's just, you know, the things we have to do for how poor our coaching staff is. Brandstrom's definitely going to be top pairing. So it's just, who do we want to play him with? I think we'll give Graves the chance. Maybe. Yeah, I think we'll give Graves the chance. We're going to go Branstrom, Graves, Borovietsky, Wolan, and Zaitsev, and Shabbat. Just to try and get the most out of this. Now, I mean, you could argue, you know, where the pluses are worth it. But we're going to give that a shot. And then just looking at the forwards here, I mean, it's it's been rough. For most people. We're going to leave the forwards as is for this game at least. But another rough game here. And perhaps we'll make a change. So game four. Bruins have a 2-1 to one series lead. We need to get a victory here. Pretty plain and simple. First period is scoreless. 15 shots to 8 in their favor. 
second period, is not scoreless. Colin White and Vlad Nemestikov. 25 shots to 24, but a 2 to nothing lead on the board as the top six contributing in a big-time way here in this fourth game, although Charlie Coyle scores fairly early on into the third period. Bergeron scores shorthanded, and we are tied, but Colin White gets a second goal of the game fairly quickly after the power play expires. So we're back up by one, under eight minutes to go now. Here in this third period, can we hold on? Please, I beg you, Aiden Hill, get the job done. Alexi Lafreniere gets his first ever postseason goal. It's an empty net power play tally. Four to two is your final. And you know what? We're at least putting up a fight. Aiden Hill was great. 939 save percentage, a hat trick of assists for Taylor Hall. I mean, you know, we're going to push the Bruins to at least six games. And to me, that is incredibly impressive. While we do have some concerning notes, like Taylor Hall not scoring a goal, he's been an amazing uh, assistman. He's been an assistman at this point. I mean, the emergence of uh, Aiden Hill. Didn't think he'd be the one that wanted to prove to be the top option, but here he is. Here he is. You know, if I swap Borowiecki and Zaitsev, yeah, we lose that boost. What if... I mean, Graves is okay that game. I'm going to leave it as is again. You know, I'm still worried about... I mean, granted, the, the slight minuses aren't the worst deal in the world. Ilya Mikheyev has been a complete non-factor so far. That's concerning. I think we're going to leave it as is after that victory. It's game five in Boston. Tampa's up 3-2 to two on Buffalo, so it looks like the winner of this series will be heading down to Tampa. The question is, who's it going to be? First period of this fifth game goes well for the Bruins. Nemestikov starts off the scoring, but Brad Marchand with two goals in 29 seconds, one of which was on the power play, restores the lead or you know, establishes the lead for the Bruins as they doubled us up in shots as well. Second period, scoreless. Shots still close. Score is still close, and we still trail. See what happens here. Taylor Hall gets his first goal of the series, a power play marker. Good stuff. Another power play opportunity here. This one goes to waste. We are halfway through this third period, tied at two. What's going to happen here is the question. Three, two, one. We are going to overtime. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see it happen. I want to see it happen. The Ottawa Senators. Let's see how this one plays out. I can only imagine. Let's see how she goes. <laughs> you know what? Why not, right? Every once in a while, it's like, you know what? No, I, d I do want to see how a non-elimination game plays out. I'll be very intrigued to see, of course, how this one plays out because there is a chance that we could have the opportunity at ending this series in just six games back in Ottawa. So, again, we'll see whether or not that happens. A little bit of setup work here on my side of things. Can I edit the slider adjustments? I can. I want not that. Nope. Okay, I can't edit what I want to edit here. Damn. Uh, we'll just put it on full sim and see how it plays out. Uh, I forgot to update this franchise mode with the sliders I had been using in other series. Yeah, it's the preset that I can't change right now. All right, so we'll just put it on full, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes, and we will hope for the best. Let's do this. Overtime, game five, here in Boston. We'll see if we can get the better of it. Patrice Bergeron loses it quickly. Taylor Hall able to recover. Again, finally scoring a goal in this series. He has it now down that left-hand side. In front, White for Hall. He scores! Unbelievable! 12 seconds into the overtime. Taylor Hall wins it for the Ottawa Senators. And we have a 3-2 series lead over the Boston Bruins. That was lightning quick from Hall. Quick little give and go with Colin White. Completely caught Tukarask off guard. 
as Tory Krug just got caught up and lost Taylor Hall on the play. Outstanding. That is as fast of an overtime winner as you will see. Taylor Hall has shown up in this series from a goal scoring standpoint. And what a time as again Aiden Hill is up there emerging as the starter. We are one win away from making it to the second round. Colin White loses the opening draw. Krug got it to Bergeron. It was Taylor Hall's poke check that started the offense. Colin White was able to retrieve it. Loses it. But again, Hall recovers. Drop pass back to Graves. I mean, good movement there through the neutral zone. And then right here, Taylor Hall just throws it into the middle, but he finds the space. Marshawn and Pasternak caught a little bit too high. And as Rask commits the traffic in front, I think he just couldn't get over there in time. Taylor Hall fires that one home. And the Ottawa Senators, can you believe it, are either going to win this series in six or at least take the Bruins to seven games. Never thought that'd be the case when we began this season, but here we are. And that is why we kept this team together, to be able to say that anything can happen once you're in the playoffs, and it is true. As Aiden Hill, no doubt, is our starter right now. Signed him on a fluke, for the most part. And right now, he's proven to be the guy here in Ottawa. I thought it might be Nilsson. You know, his hot start, uh, once he finally started getting games, was crucial for us. Look at Ryan Graves really stepping up there. Thomas Shabbat, still just one point, but this is it. It's game six on home ice in Ottawa. And the question is... I'll change over the uh, sliders afterwards. It makes watching the AI gameplay a little bit more interesting, although, boy, that was interesting in and of itself. Let's do this. Game six, can we end this series? First period, not the start we wanted. Power play goal for Charlie Coyle. Andre Kasha adds the other one. So I had a feeling it would be a bit of a rough start, and there you go. Second period, we battle back. Taylor Hall, two more goals. Pasternak's power play tally is the difference maker so far. Shots are close, the score is close, the Bruins with the slight edge in both. As we head into the third period here again of Game 6, a chance to end this series. The Bruins looking to force Game 7 back in Boston after the shocking overtime winner from Taylor Hall in Game 5 gave us the lead in this series. We'll see what happens here. Five minutes to go. Can we get the tying goal is the question. We're going to find out. There's 55 seconds left, but you know what? Screw it. I'm jumping into this one as well. Why not? Do we have an alternate? We have the Winter Classic, or not the Winter Classic. Eh, I mean, yeah, we do have the Winter Classic. Screw it. Let's rock this jersey. Uh, for the hell of it. Actually, here, yeah, we'll go over to game settings now that we're already here. Gameplay sliders. That's not what I wanted. It's weird. It's in the rules setting as opposed to the slider settings. And we are going to go with Dan 2. Electric... Boogaloo. I think I need to slightly uh, update those. There might be some penalty madness uh, with these. Again, it's a slider set I got off of the Operation Sports Forum, which I actually really like. And uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm willing to jump into it. I mean, hey, if we can score as quickly as we did you know, just a few minutes ago, things might go well for us. Let's find out. Can we tie this up and force overtime, or will the Bruins force Game 7? That is the question. One minute to go. On the clock. Let's see what happens. The Bruins do win this draw yet again. We recover possession, leading it up the ice now. Chance here for Thomas Shabbat. Throws it in front, and Tuka Rask with a big time stop here late in the game. Here come the Bruins down the other way. Corrali has trouble with it. He's able to regain. Tried to throw it to the middle. Good play again by Shabbat. Looking to lead it the other way. Connor Brown now tries to step into the middle. Can't fight his way through. Zaitsev for Logan Brown. Can't get the shot off on net. Tries to throw that one on. Hits the side. Again, a one-timer doesn't go through. Brown tries to throw it back to the point. It goes all the way down. Off the post and nearly own gold. Corrali fighting for it. Gets it up to the pass. Gets up to the point. Brady Kachuk has it. Come on, Brady. 13 seconds left. Brady Kachuk shot stopped by Tuka Rask. And we'll see what happens here. This is it. 
This is it. A huge face-off. Colin White against Patrice Bergeron. Let's see how this goes. Can he win it? Tie up. Bruins have it for the moment. Bergeron still fighting for it. Gets it to Pasternak. The Boston Bruins are going to live to see another day. It's a 3-2 victory in Game 6. They keep their season alive. And it's going to be Game 7 back in Boston, as you perhaps may have expected. Taylor Hall, another strong performance. But unfortunately, Tuka Rask just a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better uh, than Aiden Hill on this day. So we will go to Game 7. We'll see what happens from there. And hopefully, hopefully, a miracle goes down. Taylor Hall's been phenomenal. He's been so good. Now it's just a question of how much money is he going to make in the offseason? You know, you talk about what we've done for him. I mean, he has been able to rehab his career after a disastrous kind of season and a half between New Jersey and Arizona. <sighs> We're going with this team. There's some younger players that could fill in. We're going with this team. And we're just going to try to make the best of it. It's all we can do. You know, we might be able to say, like, oh, slot out Mikheyev. Nah. Let's stick with this team as it is. Although Ilya Mikheyev, with that type of playoff performance, you will not be coming back. Although you can make yourself a hero right here and right now. It's Game 7 in Boston. All or nothing. Here we go. First period. And a good start for both sides. Ryan Graves. I think that's probably his first ever postseason goal. But Nick Ritchie scores again. We outshot them 13-5, to yet we're tied. So that's a huge win for the Bruins through 20 minutes. Second period. <sighs> Taylor Hall hath awoken. Oh my goodness. Two more goals for Hall. A minute and four seconds apart. Kasha gets one back. But the Sens are up 3-2. to two. Heading into the third period of Game 7 on the road. Can we do this? Five minutes gone. Still looking good. Power play for the Sens. Doesn't pay off. Alexi Lafreniere makes it 4-2. to two. Oh my god. Have the Senators done it? Power play for the Bruins. Connor Brown! The Ottawa Senators have won in the first round of the playoffs. Knocking off the Bruins in seven games, and that is why you go for it if you have a chance. Taylor Hall and company get the job done. Aiden Hill establishes himself as the starting goaltender of this team, and we are moving on to round two to probably take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. No! We're moving on to play the Buffalo Sabres who win two straight. It'll be Sens, Sabres, Hurricanes, and Caps in round two of the Eastern Conference. Over in the West, it's going to be Edmonton, Calgary, Dallas, and Winnipeg. The Buffalo Sabres pull off the upset. And from here, who knows what the hell is going to happen for the Sens. Brady Kachuk, point per game. Colin White was phenomenal. Taylor Hall was incredible. Bobby Ryan was strong. Nemesnikov was... Lafreniere was strong from an offensive standpoint. You could talk about maybe mixing and matching and trying some different line combos here, although we did win. Connor Brown, eh. Logan Brown, meh. Mikheyev, eh. Got a point in that game. Uh, Nick Paul was okay. The penalty minutes are slightly concerning. Anisimov was a non-factor, as was Sabarin. <sighs> did this team deserve to move on? I don't know. The question is, do we change you know, certain things up, or do we just stick with it? Because what the hell? Brandstrom, very solid. Ryan Graves was fantastic. Borowiecki, meh. Uh, Christian Molanin was solid. Zaitsev, eh. And Shabbat, eh. But somehow, someway, <laughs> we made it through. Aiden Hill, three wins and five appearances with a 920 save percentage. I mean, Nilsson won the game that he played somehow. But Aiden Hill gets the chance, and he makes the most of it. The Ottawa Senators are moving on to round two. We will be taking on the Buffalo Sabres with home ice advantage. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anything can happen when you go for it in the playoffs. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you all in round two. As I mentioned, though, in the comments section of the last episode and the episode before that, if you have any suggestions for any uh, funny stories or anything interesting for the controversy wheel as we move forward through these seasons, leave those suggestions down in the comments below. Excited to see what you guys can come up with. You've already come up with some, uh, some very interesting options. I'll leave it at that. Of course, as per usual, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I mean, we got to get to 20K one of these days, right? I wanted to be there a while ago, I'll be honest. But hey, growing on YouTube is difficult, uh, especially when you're a hockey YouTuber. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing in the world. Make sure to drop a like on the video as well. It would help me out a lot. Again, I've mentioned this especially uh, with, I'm going to say, just flat out ad revenues down for me right now, which kind of sucks. Even though my videos do, you know, they're doing as well as they normally do. That's thanks to the old pandemic. So if you can leave a like on the video, help, you know, try to get an eye on what we're doing around here. That would be greatly appreciated. And of course, check out everything in the description. The socials, the Twitter, the Instagram. Of course, the link to the Twitch is there. We stream every single night. And of course, you can check out the VOD from every stream uh, right there on that platform. Of course, there is also uh, the lovely Teespring. I have shirts for sale. There's a bunch of random stuff. You never know what you're going to see on there. So, hey, feel free to check that out as well if you can uh, spare a couple of bucks in these trying times. Aside from that, last thing I want to do, as I always do, is shout out my lovely patrons over on Patreon who have uh, given me a couple of extra bucks. And I thank you guys very much for that. If you missed it, there was a Houston Apollos episode up yesterday. And uh, there might be some more stuff up on that platform soon. Time will indeed tell. But for now, we are done here. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.